This week on Maker Update, a robotic golf club, cheating at Scrabble, a tetrahedron for your head, a really long gripper, and see-through Arduino. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're out there making the best of things. I've been in a kind of cleaning and organization mode. I feel like a little chaos is good for me, but some of these piles have been around a little too long, and I need to get them in some kind of order. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Uh, I have a lot of great projects to show you, so let's get started with the project of the week. DIY golf tech is not a category I've covered often, nor is it a game I know much about beyond mini golf. But I can still appreciate the work that Shane Witten put into this servo adjustable golf club. The basic idea is to allow a single golf club to function like multiple golf clubs. By using the rotary encoder and screen on the shaft of the club, you can select the style of club you want, which effectively adjusts the angle of the face of the club. Because he's using a servo and 3D printed parts to accomplish all this, the trick was finding a mechanical linkage that would prevent the impact of the ball from transmitting back to his servo. His clever solution works like a lead screw, giving him around 25 degrees of adjustment while also keeping the club from flopping around. To take things even further, Shane includes a feature that can adjust the angle of the club to your swing to help you achieve a target distance. A precision IMU in the shaft measures the velocity and angle of the club. It's not clear yet whether it has a real effect, but it's a cool idea. For another innovation in gameplay enhancement, Wayne Covell created this Raspberry Pi computer vision project that looks at your Scrabble tiles and gives you some word options. Using a connected camera, the Pi grabs an image of your tiles and then runs optical character recognition to determine what the letters are. Once that's done, it determines what words can be made from those letters and presents them to you in the order of the highest scoring words. Now you still have to figure out a way to play those words on the current board, and honestly, I have no idea how you can seal the whole rig from your opponent. Maybe if you're sheltering in place with a Scrabble genius, they'll allow this just to level the playing field. Or maybe you can take a different approach and distract them with this tetrahedral LED hat. On Instructables, Cookbert shares his design for this animated LED pyramid that he insists on calling a hat, but for me, I think it would just be a cool thing to put on a shelf. His version uses milled plexiglass, but there's no reason you couldn't laser cut it or use wood or even drill it all by hand. For the electronics, he's using an inexpensive Arduino Nano, NeoPixel strip, and a Bluetooth module. The Bluetooth module allows you to connect up your smartphone and change the different animation modes wirelessly. There's no code for this yet, but he says it's coming, so if it's something you want, be sure to leave him a request on the Instructable. On YouTube, Alan Pan shows how he made this really long gripper arm as a social distance tool. It's way more silly than practical, but it's fun to see his build process one of the most interesting components is this material he's using to extend the arm. It's this flat roll of material called a roll tube and it's used by the military to create temporary antennas. Alan calls it a giant slap bracelet and that's essentially what it is. It's a great video and worth a watch. Back on Instructables, Jiri Prow shows how he made this freeform circuit version of a working Arduino board using brass wire and individual components. This is actually an older project from Jiri, but it's the first time I've seen it all spelled out as an instructable. It's beautiful, it works, it's completely impractical, but man, it looks so cool. It's time for some tips. From the Tetrahedral LED hat project, I learned about the MIT App Inventor site. This is what Cookbert used to make that simple Android app to switch modes on the Arduino Nano over Bluetooth. It's sort of like Scratch, but for building apps. And it's drag and drop, it's free, and there's a library in there for Arduino serial communication and for Bluetooth. On Tested, Adam Savage shows off some of his favorite tools for drawing circles. The star of the show is this brass compass by Maker's Cabinet called Iris that opens and closes like a camera iris. Through the Oshpark blog, I learned about the Atom Switch. This is a tiny switch made to fit a breadboard. One half of it plugs into your power rails and the other plugs into a single row. Underneath the board, there are jumpers you solder to define the switch as a pull up or pull down. For Arduino projects, it seems like a great thing to have handy and they're dirt cheap. On the Get Hands Dirty channel, there's a great video on making this cabinet for storing small hardware, sandpaper, and drill bits. This is the kind of organization I dream about and the look of the plywood and the floating drawer faces is outstanding. On the Adafruit blog, I learned about this 3D printed vice for holding project boards. The design is by Revsin on Thingiverse, 
with a remix by Mickey Manu that adds a V-shape to the Jaws. Also on Thingiverse, check out this ultimate box maker tool by Joel Ebel. It makes use of the Thingiverse customizer feature to let you put in dimensions, add vents, text, mounting holes for electronics, all kinds of stuff. Customizer is sometimes a buggy mess, but this one seemed to work for me. And on the Core 77 blog, I got a kick out of this drive-through delivery box that extends out to a car window. I don't know if it's the perfect solution for touch-free delivery, but I love seeing the ingenuity, and it's a great reminder that we are, right now, living in a time where the world really wants creative engineering solutions from people like us. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest video on Wi-Fi, how it works, and how to integrate it into your next project. The demo uses the Arduino MKR1000 board and its companion app, which you can use for communicating to your board and adding interaction and virtual buttons and timers. Check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you have some secret weapon for organizing your workbench or your garage or old projects or components, let me know about it in the comments, all right? Because I am looking for solutions. A uh, big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and especially to DigiKey Electronics for making this whole thing possible. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.